I think there's a lot of until that happens, uh, and we definitely can't make it. I think there'll be a, a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, we're we're still holding out hope, I guess, from a, from the Australian point of view. But yeah, obviously. Bitterly disappointing for the team, but you know I think we have to give credit to Fiji. Eddie was quick to, like you've done, give give credit to Fiji. Um, is it a viable get out for for him that a lot of this Australia side will be around, hopefully for the Lions in twenty twenty five and the next World Cup in twenty twenty seven, or do we have to look into how Eddie have, has has prepared the side for this tournament? Well, look, I think you know, there's a lot of questions that can be asked around you know time that he's had. Um, you know, only having five games before a, before a big tournament, obviously wanting to pick. Uh, he's actively and gone out and said, we need a younger team. We need to get them exposed. Now, whether whether doing that at a World Cup is the right choice or whether going, look, let's do what we can to win this World Cup and let's start again post, you know, from November 1st onwards is basically where we're, you know, we're, we're attacking it. But maybe his, you know, his viewpoint, I'm not sure what it is, but maybe that's, you know, his exposure is like, we just need to expose these guys to this because if we're going to win the next one, we need as many people with World Cup experience under their belt. And I guess if we didn't do that and moved on a few guys, we'd have, you know, there'd be a lot of guys going to a home World Cup in four years' time with zero World Cup experience. And, you know, we're already seeing it's a different it's a different beast playing at a World Cup, the intensity, and then adding the fact that it would be a home World Cup, you know, the pressures that come with that, maybe that's the decision-making it's sort of driven Eddie and the and the management to to go down the path he has. But look, it's you know you want to go to a World Cup, you want to win it. I mean, there's no doubts in my mind that that's the you know that's the main game. I think we're seeing you know a bit more different style of rugby. Um, you know, we're seeing Fiji. You know, you know outscored two tries to one and win a game. I mean, I don't think we would have ever spoken about that previously. You know that they're taking shots for poles and things like that. So that that shows you that. World Cups are different, you know. I guarantee if you play Fiji in a in a friendly in an autumn international over in the UK, they won't be taking as many shots for poles. They'll be tapping and going and running the ball like they normally do. So I think you got to understand that World Cups are different, um, and I think that's something that maybe has driven you know Eddie's selection of a younger team uh, and exposing these guys to something that they probably hadn't or need to experience and, you know, learning the hard way. Is he, we, what, from what we've heard, him him coming in um, to the to the Wallabies chop, top job was always a case of maybe working backwards from 2027. Is his job in peril if, if the worst happens against Wales? Oh, I don't know. I think, look, there's, that's probably for the guys that are, that are above my pay grade. But look, I think there's been certainly you, you have to look at that. That hasn't been said, obviously, by the, the you know the by Rugby Australia, but by signing into a lot, such a long term deal, you'd have to think that we have un, you know you've got to understand what's coming down the pipe for for rug, for Rugby Australia. Obviously, we've got a you know a home line series, which we know how important how massive that is, not only for you know rugby, but but also the, the game and the financial state that we're in currently, and then also you've got a a home World Cup two years later for the men, and then you've got a home World Cup two years later for the women in 2029, and then we have a, an Olympic Games in Brisbane in 2032, where we'll have hopefully the, the chance to win. So there's a real lengthy process of big Australian rugby events in this country that we need to make the most of, and um, I think we'd anyone would be lying to say that that wasn't in the back of a lot of people who are planning you know, higher up in Rugby Australia's mind that, you know, we need to make sure we get them right, particularly at home in, in our crowded mar- sporting marketplace. We're a long way away, but speaking of crowded sporting marketplaces, it seemed as though Eddie's kind of force of personality had a bit of impact as far as pushing Union to the top of that or certainly making a few waves within it. Um, is that still the case now? Uh, yeah, well, I think for the, you know, probably for the right reasons in, you know, when, when he first came on, um, you know, it was a big, he, he's a, he's a big character, Eddie. And he, I, look, he, he knows, as you would have experienced over there, he knows, you know, nothing I, you know, anything that seems off the cuff and random, I don't believe is, um, you know, there's a plan for what he's doing and he's got an idea and it's a, it's a strategic ploy for, for one reason or the other. It might not be the same strategic ploy that we believe, but there's a reason to it. And certainly his injection and then the signing of, 
particularly targeting a number of high-profile rugby league players, um, drew a lot of attention from the rugby league media, which is a big part of Sydney and Brisbane. Uh, the cities where you know rugby is probably its strongest. Um, now there's probably the media is probably turned a little bit based on the results. You know, with he's won you know uh, two uh, one game in seven um, uh, and not had the performance. You know, and the teams ranked. Or I don't know where we are after the weekend, but we were sort of a ninth, eighth, ninth position, which is not where the Australian public are used to seeing the Wallabies. Right where. You know, we think of the golden generation, the early 2000s, you know, winning Bledisloe's, winning World Cups, you know, losing in a World Cup final. But, you know, I think a big part of Australian culture, it's very similar with England, the, 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 the country expect their national team to win, whether it's cricket, whether it's rugby, whether it's rugby league, whether it's football, but yeah, particularly rugby and, and rugby and cricket, you know, the expectation is that our national team now go out and they'll win. Um, and so when that doesn't happen and there's performances and the fact that, you know, we, we could bomb out of a World Cup for the first time in, um, you know, ever in the pool stages, um, there's certainly some some areas of the media and, and, you know, the rugby league media are probably taking that opportunity to, to stick the boot in, uh, as you may know here, that obviously the codes are, you know, while we also we get along, we always, we're all fighting for the same talent, for the same sponsorship dollars, for the same fans, uh, it, which makes it quite a unique sporting marketplace. You, you've played in World Cup knockout games yourself in, in 2011, 2015. That's essentially where the Wallabies are now. Um, what would it be like in camp heading towards the Wales game? Yeah, look, I think there'd be a bit, you know, there'll be high tension. I think obviously there's some selection issues. We've had some injuries. So I think, well, my opinion is the fact that, you know, there's been made decisions of internally that, you know, Will and Taniella won't be available for this weekend. I think it's a good thing. It gives guys a bit of clarity and security around what they're doing. Um, selection will be interesting to see what uh, Eddie does. Um, and, you know, you'd be wanting to give the guys that are starting as much time together as possible during the week. So that's something that would be interesting to come. You know, I'd expect Wales to play a much different game to Fiji, a lot more territory-based a lot more, you know, they'll be very hard at the breakdown. They would have seen how poor we were at our attack and clear and how many, how, how much success the Fijians were able to have. So I think we'll see something similar from the Welsh, but with a more tactical kicking now. It's a high pressure game that we've seen from Warren Gatlin's teams over the year. Kick to the kick, you know, don't put it out and make them make Australia run out and pressure uh, and, and try and turn that pressure into points. So look, I think this week in camp, you know, they will know the players, you know, will, will, Eddie will try and not speak about it, I imagine, but it would be very much front and back of mind that, you know, we, you know, it's, it's win or go home pretty much this weekend. And even if we do win, we're still waiting on results and bonus points and all that. But the main thing for the guys this weekend is it's, it's, it's win at all costs. Will they do it? I think we will. I think we we'll probably have a game plan that will probably suited to how Wales play. I mean, you know, the, I don't think the Welsh have played particularly well. Um, you know, they played, they, they were able to squeeze Fiji in that first half um, and then, you know, probably did enough to get the job done against Portugal, but that was it. You know, get a bonus point. I don't think they were overly impressive against, you know, a pretty valiant Portuguese side. So I think the ability is to, to not lose our nerve. As I said, I think we'll see a lot of kicking, a lot of pressure in terms of, you know, high contestables, digging into the corner, trying to make the Wallabies play out of their own zone. So, you know, you've got to be disciplined and to your kick strategy, which I think will be vital again this weekend. And when Australia has the opportunity, we saw, I think against Fiji, when we did, you know, pick the tempo up and we're able to win those collisions, we did look a lot better, but we were just not consistent enough and got turned over at the wrong time, particularly in that, late in that second half where we had a few opportunities. You know, I think we would have bought, blown like three to four key attacking opportunities in the Fiji in 22, which could have you know turned into a different result. Um, you you played under Eddie a long time ago at the Reds. I'm not, I'm not asking you about that, but the, these games where you've got Eddie Jones versus Warren Gatlin this weekend, these games when there are these big personalities in charge of sides what's it like as a player are you just happy for them to do the press and get on with get on with your own prep 
Yeah, well, I think probably for the young guys, I think that's probably the way they'll look at it. If you look at the guys, they probably don't want to be in front of the camera. You know, there'd be, again, a lot of tough questions regarding, you know, they don't need to be reminded what's at stake. Um, and I think Eddie and and probably Warren, both of them will, will enjoy, you know, throwing the barbs out. You know, I remember Czech, when, when I was part of the Wallaby side, when Eddie toured, uh, down under, and it was basically Czech versus Eddie for, for for three weeks. I don't think anyone else got a word in. It was just the two of them going at it. And, you know, I guess as you're a bit older, and I was sort of right at the back end of my test career, and I sort of, you can sit back and, and laugh and appreciate it, you know, for what it is, for the theatre, which, you know, which is what drove seats, drove attention, drove media space. But I think, um, yeah, for the guys now in, in the in the in the camp, I think they'll be happy to, steer clear of any sort of media juice and, you know, the more Eddie can take, the better.